Thank you. So, as you see, I'll talk about privacy of dynamic data, continual observation, and pan privacy. And this is joint work with uh, Cynthia Dwork, Tony Pitassi, Guy Rothblum, who is sitting right here and prepared to answer all the tough questions, and uh, Sergei Yechanin. Oh, hi, Russell. So, uh, in general, in statistical data analysis, uh, there are huge benefits from analyzing large collections of data. And you want to find correlations, especially, for instance, for medical uh, uh, research. You want to provide better services. You want to be able to publish official statistics that are required by law. Data mining is uh, definitely something that is uh, considered to have a lot of utility. But of course, the question is, uh, what about um, uh, since data in general contains uh, uh, confidential information, the question, of course, is what about uh, uh, privacy? So how can we publish uh, all those wonderful things while maintaining privacy? So here is an example of a utility that we can get. Does anyone know? Oh, well, I already showed it. So this is a, a map from, a, a, it's considered the beginning of epidemiology, a map uh, investigating cholera. And you can see here, these uh, black, this is the map of London, and this was a cholera uh, epidemic in 1854, and the map prepared by John Snow, a, a doctor. Uh, and, uh, and here, the, these bars represent cases of cholera. And he was looking for, at this time, the source of uh, what, what causes cholera was unknown. And it wasn't clear how it spreads. And uh, what he figured out after he drew the map is that it's the, there is a suspected pump, a well, and uh, the well was closed down as a result. And uh, well, the story is that the epidemic was cured. And then, of course, when you read a little more, there are, uh, it's perhaps a little, the story is a little different. But this is a wonderful map that uh, convinced people that there is something in uh, the theory that. Well, can tell you water pumps cause cholera? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that cholera spreads by contaminated water. The yeah, 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 absolutely. Not that for your water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They even found that the, the well was dug next to a cesspool, so it, they even figured out why, why this particular well. So until then, it, the people just didn't know how it spread. So this is an example of a utility you can get from, uh, from, from, uh, uh, by, by from statistics. But really what mattered here wasn't the p individuals who got cholera, but the rough statistics. You wanted somehow the clustering. So we want to keep the aggregate information while hiding particular cases. And if you want a more modern version of, the, of this issue here, there is a, 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 a website that tells you whether you have the swine flu or not, or you, you answer lots of questions, and in the end, you're asked whether you agree that it will be used in um, you, it will be used by uh, health officials uh, and uh, researchers, and you can agree or disagree, uh, 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 decline or, or accept. And uh, again, they promise you that they're going to keep it uh, private. So, how do you keep such information? How do you keep individual information private while still uh, maintaining utility? So is it uh, possible at all? Uh, so first you can ask, is it a meaningful goal? Uh, is it achievable? And uh, in, in general, the holy grail here is to have meaningful statistics, to get the utility of statistic analysis while protecting privacy of every individual participant. And, uh, and we want pr uh, some sanitization of the data that will allow us reasonably accurate answers to meaningful information. So if you define this, if you define it in the most general terms, you can show that this is impossible because of auxiliary information. If you don't know, and if you have absolutely no restriction about what the, ad, what the adversary, what auxiliary information about the data the adversary has, then uh, you can show that this is impossible to achieve. However, there is a lot that can be done under the, uh, under the definition of uh, differential privacy. So this was suggested a few years ago by Dwork, McSherry, Nassim, and Smith. And 
the definition of differential privacy talks uh, says that assumes that the adversary knows everything except whether you're in the database or not. So you as an individual. So um, what it says is that the probability of every bad event increases by only a small multi multiplicative factor wh whether I'm in the, uh, the database or not. So if it doesn't really matter for if the bad events, what I consider bad events, don't really or, or not really affected whether I'm in the database or not, then why I shouldn't care, that's the rationale, I shouldn't care whether my statistic is being used or not. For instance, in the H1N1 survey that we've just seen. So uh, a little bit more formally, what we want is that uh, we say that a sanitizer is epsilon differentially private. So a sanitizer is a function of the data. Okay, a, a sanitizer, a sanitizer, what does a sanitizer do? A sanitizer takes a database and produces uh, and produces a sanitized version of it. So we're saying that a sanitizer, a sanitizer, so we have an algorithm A which, is a san which takes a database and produces some uh, clean version of it with no private information. So we say that it's f epsilon differentially private if for all databases and all individuals me and all possible events T, the probability that the, that the product of the sanitization is in, in T uh, whether I'm in the database or whether I'm not in the database, the ratio between these things is uh, roughly 1 plus epsilon or e between uh, e to the uh, minus epsilon and e, and e plus epsilon. Okay, so this is the notion. So what the, the nice thing here is that uh, it assumes that the adversary knows everything about the database except my information. So it doesn't know, whether, uh, it doesn't know my own uh, personal information. So we've limited the auxiliary information to saying you know everything, but you don't know uh, whether I'm in the database or not. That's the only thing you don't know. So this is uh, so uh, so um, in, so as I said, this handles auxiliary information. And here is an example of something that has no differential privacy. Let's say we want to sanitize. Uh, the, uh, we have the sort of the database is a bunch of names, and if for each name we have a tag zero or one. This is what the database looks, and we the, the piece of information that we're trying to sanitize is whether the number of participants that have uh, their tag is one. Okay, so here is something that is uh, that is typically done. Uh, uh, in statistics, you sample, you produce a sample. You choose and re release a few random individuals. So you could say, ah, oh, it's not so bad. What is the chance that I will be released? But if you're released. You release like if you're a name stack. Yeah, uh, you release, uh, yeah, you release, a uh, exactly, you release a, a, a pair, a name and tag. A name and a tag. So if you do this, then this has no, uh, the bad event is that I've been sampled. And this has zero chance if I'm not in the database. If I'm, if I'm not in the database, I will not be sampled. But if I am in the database, there is some probability that it will be uh, released. And uh, therefore, in the, therefore the, 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 what we have here has no, uh, no, it's not differentially private for any epsilon. You want to motivate why multiplicity is uh, better than addition? So, this is exactly. <laughs> this is the motivation. I don't want. I don't want. To, it, uh, so I, I it's true that a priori this is not such a bad thing. I what's the chance that it'll be released? But once it happens, then then uh, my I, uh, my, my uh, privacy has been violated. Okay, that's that's uh, that's the problem with this. What so. Let's say I, I really, well, not one in n, slightly more. I really say the size of the, the sample over n. But what is the probability? This is the probability that I'm sampled. If I'm in the database, the probability that I'm sampled is the size of the sample over n. n is the size of the database. So I'm saying this is, this is not a private solution from our point of view. This is not a good solution because you are completely ruining some, somebody's privacy, and that's not acceptable. We want to say that given the output, all the, the, the chance that it came from a database with me or the chance or, or the, probability that the, the, the probability that I would have produced this output w if I'm in the database, if 
that individual is in the database or whether it's not in the database are very close to each other. Now, it seems that, it, it, I mean, you really want to have some kind of a Bayesian model also of how the database is structured. So here I'm assuming that the adversary knows everything about the database because it's very hard to quantify uh, it's very hard to quantify uh, the auxiliary information. But let's say, what, what I, I actually, I have an answer to, so I, I can say, what is it that we want from a privacy mechanism? Uh, maybe, I'll get to it in a few slides. Uh, what, are the, what are the essential properties we want from a, 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 a privacy mechanism? And differential privacy satisfies it. Uh, I'm not saying that there is nothing else that satisfies it, but this is definitely satisfies it. And, it's, and, and, the naive, and m most naive things do not satisfy. Anyway, so this is an example where there is no differential privacy. On the other hand, if instead what we did, uh, again, we, we have the same issue. We have a, a bunch of individuals and tags. And the stuff we want to publish is the number of participants whose tag is uh, zero. Then what we do is we simply output the number, the actual output, plus noise. And how is the noise distributed? The, we want the noise to be distributed um, uh, so that the probability the, uh, the noise is k minus 1 is something like uh, uh, e to the epsilon times the probability that the noise is k. And uh, so, the, so, we, so something that has this property is the Laplacian uh, distribution with parameter 1 minus uh, uh, epsilon. Uh, so here is in, in the Laplacian noise, the probability of, uh, if, if the parameter is b, the probability of outputting z is proportional to 1 over 2b times e to the uh, uh, absolute value of z over b. The variance in this case is 2b um, uh, squared. And whether, whether the actual values here or here has this uh, difference. So what we know is that... Uh, the diff so this satisfies exactly what we want. So if we add, so if we go back, if we add here a Laplacian noise to, if the noise we add here is Laplacian noise, then whether I'm in the database or not, the sensitivity of this function is one. So uh, the Laplacian noise exactly satisfies what we want. The pro whether uh, uh, g given a, an actual value, given that I'm saying that there are five ones, uh, whether I'm in the database or not. Of course, if my tag is zero, it has uh, no effect. But if my tag is one, the only difference could be uh, at most one. And, the, and we said that the influence is uh, e to the epsilon as we need here. So you pay with accuracy. So I pay with accuracy, but at least the, 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 so, uh, the accuracy is the noise, and at least the, the, the variance is bounded there. So this is, the, so this is a very uh, elementary thing we can do. To, uh, to, uh, to obtain privacy. Just add La Laplacian noise. Okay. So, uh, w in fact, this is going to be, uh, we're going to use that a lot in the, this talk. Um, so, what are the, so, he, so here's back to, uh, to, to your question. What, what is it that we want from a um, sanitization mechanism? Uh, yeah. No. Uh, no, so good. So maybe you should tell the audience that more than this can be done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So how many of you have been to Guy's talk uh, earlier this semester? Okay, so you know that more can be done. <laughs> okay. So, um, so the properties that we want from a sanitization mechanism is one is composability. So that if we apply the sanitization mechanism several times on related database, we're not destroying everything. And this is where a lot of previous uh, suggestions failed. For instance, I don't know if any of you have heard of k-anonymity. Uh, so in k-anonymity, the problem, k-anonymity says something like after, after the publication of the sanitized information, you cannot tell the individual to within k people. The problem with this definition, uh, uh, first you have to quantify it, of course, but the, the, that if you do it twice on slightly related databases, you can lose all uh, you can lose all privacy, even if k is pretty large. Because less than the square root or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like you can lose all privacy as long because the intersection of the two sets is, can be one. And and you can actually come up with with real examples, not made up examples, where this happens. 
So we definitely want composability, and we want robustness to side information. We don't really want to say what the adversary knows. And this is exactly a, a differential privacy that satisfies these properties. And the truth is that we don't really have uh, any other alternative that satisfies such uh, these properties. Not clear. I, 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 I don't think that that's quite the case. Because sometimes you, act, for instance, what I'm not going to talk about the weaknesses of differential privacy, but different, if you want to actually release information about an, a, an individual, then differential privacy, you want to release some vague information about them. Male, uh, five foot five, uh, weighing uh, 200 pounds. Uh, the, so you, you want to release some very rough information about an individual, it, it kills off uh, differential privacy. But it's not clear that you have violated that individual. Well, maybe the weight thing, uh, you have violated <laughs> the privacy. But it's not clear that other than that, that you have uh, violated that individual privacy. And differential privacy just says, no, you cannot release any individual, any individual piece of information. So it doesn't capture everything. No. Let's say it doesn't release if there is such an individual. I'm saying this is a good, this is, an, an, uh, this is a benign thing to do, uh, uh, to publish that there is such an individual, and, it, and, it, and it's not differentially private. So differentially private is too strong for such, a, such things. But this is, really, really, this is really not the subject of the talk. I'm not, this is not a talk. This talk assumes that differentially privacy is the, the, the right mechanism, and we're going to, to see what we can do with differentially private in other settings. So the traditional setting, the traditional view is exactly, uh, uh, you have the data, you have a sanitizer, and it publishes uh, the output. And the sanitizer gets the data, does something with it, publishes a clean version of the output. This is sort of the in, uh, non-interactive version. Then there is the, uh, the, the interactive version. You have the data. You have a sanitizer. The sanitizer acts as an uh, intermediate between the queries and you have multiple queries. The, so the sanitizer acts as an intermediate between the queries and the data and the answers accordingly. But the point is that in both the interactive view and in the non-interactive view, the data is there when you are doing the sanitization. So the data doesn't change. It's there. So it's meaningful to, to say what the sanitizer does on, 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 on the data. You can talk about the sanitizer as a function of the data. What we're going to talk today, uh, what we're going to talk today is about the case where the, the data is not necessarily there with doing sanitization, but the data changes in time. And um, there is one example or one line of research, uh, previous research, that d does take into account, doesn't assume that the uh, data is there at a single point in time, and that's the randomized response. This is, so this is the technique suggested by uh, Stanley Warner in 1965. And it's as a method for polling uh, stigmatizing questions. You know, I ask here how many, I'm not sure what's stigmatizing here, but uh, how many people? How many people hmm? rejected? I, I, want, I, want one, uh, I want so something that would be stigmatizing in this audience. So how many? Yeah. How many, how many have you uh, have you ever plagiarized? Yeah. <laughs> have you ever plagiarized a paper? Anyway, so uh, you want to get an honest answer, and people are really afraid. And the, then the idea is to tell them to lie with a with known probability. So in specific answer is deniable, but the aggregate results, you can still conclude from the valid uh, answer. So I tell you with, with, high probab with known probability, flip your answer, and I can gather some information for there, from there. So essentially what uh, I'm telling each individual, uh, when, uh, so the, the, the noise is given before the data is gathered. right? It's done, it's never recorded. So he he's, he's takes his input, adds noise to it, and this is uh, the, the actual uh, data that he sends over. So these are all independent noises. These are all, this is all done individually. 
So here there is no notion of when the data is there. The data just, you do it, everything is done on the, every data is, every piece of data is processed on its own. And so, so in this model you really have to trust no one. On the other hand, you cannot, it's clearly, when, when you think of it, it's clearly a very limited model. Uh, because <laughs> every piece of data is processed individually. So it's very, so of course you can do simple queries as we just discussed, but it's clear if you have to relate somehow, two pieces of data have to be related, you have to, to say, for instance, you cannot do something like um, uh, density estimation. So each, in the, each person has a certain uh, mark and they want to know how many different marks there are, or what's the fraction, uh, how many different, mar uh, 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 different marks there are. Every person has a certain tag, let's say. So every person has a tag, and the tag comes from a certain range, from, uh, and they want to know how many different uh, uh, tags there are. So the same tag can appear in different individuals. Okay, so, and so here, the, such a technique would just not work, because they have to, there has to be some uh, form of communication between them. You can show it formally, that you cannot do, a, 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 that you cannot, uh, do anything without uh, communication or that you are very limited. You can do something, but it's very limited. Because every individual acts uh, on its own. So, but, but this is a very, but if you think of it, this has a lot of nice properties. You have to trust no one. You, you, um, you have to trust no one. Nothing secret is stored. There is no secret storage. You, as I said, they don't have to assume that the data is available ahead of time. And this is exactly what this talk is about, is trying to, to, to discuss these uh, properties and see what you can, uh, how, how you can achieve these properties in, in, in a more, with the, with the tougher uh, requirements, with more uh, meaningful uh, types of queries. This is actually also even differentially private, I guess, for some kind of problem. Yeah, yeah, this, if you, if you make the noise high enough, but then of course the, the accuracy is bad enough. Yeah, this, this, this is not, this is, this is too good, I, I would say. So it, it has all the good properties. The problem is that it's very limited and the accuracy isn't so great. But in terms of privacy, you can make it as good as, as you wish. Isn't it kind of like the Laplacian noise? You can, okay. What we'll do is we'll add, always add Laplacian noise to, to things. You, you could have, I could have defined it in terms of Laplacian noise. Usually it's defined with flips. One of yeah. instead of like only to the aggregate sum. Like. Yeah, right. And then you get square root of n times, uh, square root of n over epsilon uh, accuracy. Because they cancel out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, therefore you got constant accuracy. You got, uh, like a One, exactly, exactly, exactly. That, that's a very good point. So, and, and actually we're going to meet it again. Uh, so, exactly, the problem here, the, the one reason we have ba bad accuracy is that we have too much noise. The, and, and the noise, it's true that noise somewhat cancels, but doesn't cancel as much as we would like. We're really trying to hide one, we're really trying to, we, we, all we need is really one piece of noise and we're adding n, n pieces of noise. So this is exactly going, going to be uh, what we have, how to add l less noise without uh, violating uh, privacy. Yeah, so like right. Mis mis misdoing, yeah, yeah. So the sa and the sampling, right. So it depends on the on the, the application. Okay. So we uh, so as I said, we, the scenario we're dealing here is that the data keeps changing. So the data keeps changing, and not all the data is available. There is no time of sanitization. Sanitization happens all the time. So there are several issues we have to wonder. When does the algorithm actually make an output? When does it say what is it estimate? What does the adversary get to examine? What is the access the adversary has now? It's not clear because things change. How do we define uh, what is an item? What exactly is it that we're trying to protect? Because bef before it was, I mean, the issue always exists. Uh, but here, uh, if an I uh, items may be spread in various points in time, so it's not exactly clear what we're trying to protect. We have to say what it is. And then, of course, because it's changing data, the issue of efficiency is that of, of, 
uh, algorithms that deal with changing data. So in general, what we'll think of the data as being a stream of items. And uh, uh, the sanitizer sees each item and has to update its uh, internal state. So this is the data. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, the sanitizer has some state. It examines the first piece of data. Then this, uh, then this piece of data is gone. Unless it does something, unless it stores it or something, this piece of data is gone, and so on. So, uh, so, the, so the sanitizer just sees the, the data items one at a time and has to decide when it sees the data item what to do. It does something to its internal state, perhaps output something, but, has to, but it sees the items one at a time and has to make a decision. So there are, the, there are three, th three new issues or concept, uh, if you wish. Uh, so one is continual observation. So the, the algorithm, the sanitizing algorithm, always has to output something. And the adversary gets to examine the output of the sanitizer at all times. So at any point in time, you keep count of, uh, you, you have an approximation of the density. Or the example we'll see is a counter, even simpler thing. So there is always some output. So at any point in time, the, the algorithm outputs something, and the, and the adversary can see it. And the output is of this useful thing. That yeah, and the output should be useful, of course. Otherwise, yeah, you can always output something that is not useful. <laughs> but uh, uh, the point is that you're not just put, uh, putting, uh, giving an output at the end. So we call this the continual observation, or continual output observation. The other point. So in most of the talk, I'm going to concentrate on this issue. Another point is what we call pan-privacy. So here, the adversary from time to time, maybe once, maybe more than once, gets to examine the internal state of the sanitizer. Because it has a subpoena, because uh, something leaked, because somebody decided, oh, we could use this data for other stuff. So we want to say that we're protected against such, uh, such sort of leakage. So pan from inside and out, it's all private. Both the inside is private. Yes. The other point is user level versus ev event level protection. So uh, do we think of the items as singletons or are they somehow connected? So, in this, I define, uh, so here you can think of the colors that somehow are all related to the same individuals and we're trying to, uh, to hide information about the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the colored thing. So, you shouldn't be able to say whether the, the yellow stuff is in the stream or not, not whether this particular uh, piece. So, this, so if we are talking about just one particular box here, we call it event level. If you're talking about a particular color set, we say that it's user level. So now the set of events that can happen is smaller too, right? The sanitizer is the database. No, no, no. The, the sanitizer? Database, no? The database, this is the database. But the it's just coming as a stream. Coming it's coming as a stream. Uh, it can store. It has a state. Yeah, sure. If you store it, you store it. Okay. You're, okay, you're hinting that you're saying that streaming algorithms naturally are private because they have small space and therefore you cannot leak too much information. No, I'm just checking that I understand. So there's no other access. That's the only yeah, uh, yeah. memory left of the data. Uh, I, I didn't, okay. Let's perhaps see the example of uh, uh, con continual. Uh, let's see what happens in, what do we want in continual output? So in continual output, so here is the data, as before. Here is the, uh, the, the sanitizer. It has a certain state, start with a certain state. And at each point in time, it examines a, a place, moves to a new state, and produces some sort of output. And this, this is a piece of item, uh, this piece of data goes away unless you have uh, stored it. The output could be the data. The output, the output is the... I didn't say whether it's tiny or not. I, I mean, I, I do want it to be small. I want it to be small for efficiency purposes, but it's not uh, necessarily small. Yes, Russell. So how do you protect? Does the adversary know who's coming in, whose data is coming in to the system? When? Could be. Could be. Um, we, we are not restricting it. Oh, 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 right, right, right. So I have to make sure when I make the definition, I, so I have to make sure that I am, uh, for instance, I, I, I'm saying I, I have to have a blank instead of me. I also have to have a blank situation instead of whether I'm in or not. Or, or 
in general, okay, so there's, a, there's null event, that's one possibility. Another is, is, okay, we're saying we have two data streams, either, uh, well, we'll get to it when, when, when it will matter. But generally, like, the randomized response will fulfill this. Randomized response fulfills this because it, because there is no hidden, because the state is completely public at all points of time. There's no state. Yeah. So, okay, so then the next, uh, then it processes the next one, makes another out output, processes it, makes another output, and so on. So in randomized response, you replace me by someone who just uh, gives a random answer or something like that. Uh, exactly. So the point is that the adversary sees all this output, and sees all the output, for instance, whether it's an estimation, and sees how the estimation changes over time. So it knows everything, and yet the data stream should be, uh, should remain, uh, the, uh, the items in the data stream should remain differentially private. So this is the continual output observation. So uh, what we want is that an algorithm working in a stream of data, mapping prefixes of data streams to output, at step i it outputs uh, uh, sigma i, and if S and S prime are two adjacent. So now the question. Oh, the wait, wait, wait. So now this is different from the stream now. So it can see everything at every step up to that. No, it sees the output. The output it sees, not the state. Yeah. So it's just no. talking about the output. Prefix. Mapping is prefix at the other extent to the output. That's the mapping. Right. But the adversary sees the output. The algorithm, right. what the algorithm does here, what the algorithm does here depends on the prefix here. It doesn't depend on the suffix. Uh, well, okay, it's allowed, yeah, it's within the model, but okay, certainly it's very bad, I mean, it would be extremely bad for pan-privacy purposes, but now we're talking about continual, and so it will be bad for space because it would be non-efficient, inefficient, and it will uh, be, be bad for pan-privacy, but the way I, for continual, I don't care what's in the state, for the continual privacy uh, case. So, um, so we said that an algorithm is working on a stream of data, maps prefixes of uh, data streams to, to outputs, and at step i outputs sigma i. So S and S prime are two adjacent data streams. How we define adjacency is exactly whether we're talking about event level, user level, or whether the issue that you mentioned. Okay, so there is some notion of adjacency. And we want, we say that, as before, we say that algorithm is, a, uh, an algorithm is dif absolutely differentially privacy. <laughs> against continual observation if for all adjacent data stream S and S prime, for all prefixes T, and output sigma one, sigma two, up to sigma T, the probabilities are, uh, the probability of uh, outputting uh, S on, uh, outputting uh, sigma one up to sigma T on S and on S prime are, um, are within uh, E to the epsilon. Okay, the ratio, the ratio between them is E to the epsilon. So the point is that you produce the, the, the CIs before seeing everything. So, and you always have to produce something at step I, if the algorithm uh, requires. So let's see what you can do under this uh, definition. So the problem we're going to talk a lot about is the, the um, uh, counter problem. So the, our stream is simply a bunch of zeros and ones. So we have a bunch of zeros and ones. And the goal is to, public, to have a publicly observable counter with a, which says how many ones have appeared so far. So you, at any point in time, you're saying so many hamburgers sold. Oh, so, so many plagiarizers. So many <laughs> plagiarizers, yeah. So we, I ask each one of you uh, whether you've pl plagiarized or not, and I, uh, I always say how many people have plagiarized so far. Or, right, I, I, I think that McDonald's stopped doing it. At least they couldn't find it on the, I, I tried to look at, they had used to have signed so many hamburgers sold. So they just made up those numbers. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a good, good. They, they were uh, privacy conscious. <laughs> 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 so these big corporations are not so bad. So, right, you have such a counter, then it tells me whether um, Russell decided to get a Big Mac or not. <laughs> so... Um, so, so, we, so the adversary sees the, uh, our estimate of how many ones have appeared so far, and still we want to say that each, 
particular, now they, they were, we're talking about event level, we're protecting the, the issue of whether a particular uh, one, uh, whether in a particular time period we had a zero or a one. And uh, so this is, so we, want the, uh, we don't want to leak this piece of information. So what can we do? So one thing, um, so right, so this is how, uh, so that, so as we, so uh, it's exactly as before, the, it sees zeros and ones, produces some sort of estimate, and uh, we also would like it to behave like a counter, that is, it never goes down if they're only positive, if we know, if it's known that they're only positive increments, but let's ignore that, this. So at any point in time, it has an estimate how many things have appeared so far, and yet the, whether a particular individual uh, uh, at a particular uh, time, point in time, where the zero or one, that uh, should be um, uh, that should be uh, hidden, or again uh, uh, under the differentially privacy uh, definition. So what? Randomized response is our first step. Randomized response gives you something, exactly. So randomized response, what does randomized response give you? So, uh, 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 so at each point in time, your input is zero or one. What you do is you update the counter by uh, xi, but you also add Laplace noise with a magnitude one over epsilon. So you're essentially taking xi, adding to it uh, Laplace noise uh, one over epsilon. So each piece is protected now with Laplace noise, which we said before is good enough. It gives us a uh, differential privacy. So this does not prevent negative numbers? It could be negative, right, right. It could be negative, it could go down, so, but it's very easy in this case, you simply never go down. You, you, I mean, you're not hurting your privacy by not going down because it's, you may as well, because you're only limiting the, the information and uh, you're not hurting accuracy also by much. And uh, so privacy, since each increment is protected, it's good. The problem is accuracy. So the error here is something like square root of t, square root of t over epsilon. So that's the accuracy. So this is, well, is it good or not? So it doesn't sound so bad for dense streams. If the stream has lots of ones, then it's not so bad. But if a stream is relatively sparse, you have only a few, uh, uh, you have only a few ones, then it's, uh, it's terrible. Uh, T is a r rather arbitrary number. Somehow the, the how fine, a, somehow uh, we want to be able to, to play with T to say we're looking at finer periods of time or something like that. And suddenly what it means is that we have, uh, that we, we get meaningless results. Square root of T could be much larger than the maximum number of uh, elements in the stream. So you want to say that there are noise to the actual count. Exactly. <coughs> what do you do with Sauvignon for the count anyway? Pardon? Yeah, with Sauvignon for the count anyway, you uh, increment the i step to say the zero, one over the uh, uh, Yeah, uh, it's not, that's not the issue. The point is you want here, the problem is that, that Okay, the times where you increment, I mean, you could, you could view the, the solution as related to, to, to this idea, but uh, this in itself is not a, a solution. Okay, so the point is, uh, the point is we want to, uh, why did we have inaccuracy here? And this is the, this was randomized response. This is randomized response, right. exactly. And you, and you have a real problem there is like, a, the bad things are like one in a million, then Right, if, if, if n is much smaller, yeah, yeah I think. Exactly. Exactly, I'm not using, exactly, that's exactly the point. Russell, as, as Russell pointed out, the state is uh, my output, and that's too much. I'm not using the fact 
I'm, I've acted exactly as in a randomized response. I haven't utilized space at all. I haven't utilized the fact that I have space. And we do the same operation when the stream is, is sparse as when it's dense. Whereas when it's dense, we should somehow update much more frequently. When it's sparse, it sh we, we should update less frequently. Uh, Yes, exactly, well, exactly. You want sort of counts at different times. Or you're saying that it could be the exact count. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So but, uh, I mean, you yeah. Like when tons and tons and tons of zeros, and then you can sort of, OK. Yeah. OK. Now, but telling whether a stream is sparse or not is exactly what the counter does. So can we do it or not? Can we, uh, so this is, we somehow, when it's sparse, we have to do it more frequently, uh, less frequently. When it's dense, we have to do it more frequently. And, and same thing about the dense periods and, and sparser periods in the stream. Yeah. You can say, instead of saying, OK, I get a 1, instead of um, updating the counter right away, you could say, I'll make a note to myself that at some point in the, at some random time in the future, I'll update the counter. Exactly. Exactly. You have, first of all, you have to do. You cannot just update the counter when you when you encounter ones, yeah. that because that, that that leaks information. So you definitely have to act. Sometimes w you have to increment the counter when you when you see a zero. That th yeah. th that's definitely uh, the case. So uh, exactly as Russell was saying, uh, <laughs> you you when you encounter one, you 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 somehow have to store it and output it in some future not too distant. Uh, not too distant future. Exactly. So let's see how you can do that and what it buys you. Um, so essentially, what we'll do is we'll use a less accurate counter to tell us whether we're in a, uh, the density of the recent uh, events. And this will tell us how frequently to, to update. So, uh, so you <laughs> I think Russell simply went over the slides before. Uh, so you don't count, you don't, um, uh, always, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, always did. <laughs> so you don't update the count immediately. You keep a buffer of size L, uh, sort of the internal buffer. And here, this is uh, the output. And here, I'm, uh, the, in red, I'm putting the noise. So I start with some noise uh, for some various reasons. I start by putting some noise in the... In the, um, in the output buffer. And now, uh, the buffer approximates the number of ones since the last flush. So sort of the buffer grows, 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 grows. At some point, I said, that's enough. I'm, 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 actually, telling, I'm actually outputting these ones uh, to the counter. So the buffer, so when wh what happens is, so the buffer uh, gets, uh, the, the, we have this sequence. Uh, the buffer gets, sometimes it gets incremented because of noise. Sometimes it gets incremented because a, an actual one arrives. Oh, so you still use the same kind of noise? I'm using, for the buffer, I'm, for the buffer, I'm using the terrible, the, the bad approximation. And, and we'll see that the combination of these two things together actually gives us a better approximation. Yeah. And then a better and better and better. What is blue? Pardon? Okay, so again, blue is the actual uh, count. Red, red is the noise. That's why the, 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 the stuff goes down. OK, so right, it went down here. Going to here, it went down. Because the, you know, it had, we added the plus your noise, and it went down. It goes up, down, down, down. Now it goes up, and now it hits L, and it's flushed. And that's, and that's when we output something. OK, so the rule is that we, we have the buffer that approximates uh, uh, we, we want to approximate when L guys arrived. We're going, to be, we're going to be doing a pretty bad approximation for it. But all it will tell us is how many, how many uh, it all, will, all this buffer will tell us is not whether to, what to output, but when to output. The buffer just tells us when to output something. It doesn't tell us what to output. We're not add, taking the buffer and putting it in the, in the stream. Yes. So really, that's five L or exactly. So what this does, right? So 
Again, so the algorithm is, uh, 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 the, the buffer approximates the number of ones since the last flush. When the buffer hits L, we update the counter with the, uh, with the, real, with the real number of updates, uh, with the real number of ones since the last update, plus independent noise. So what we've gained is, is that the error is added once per L. Instead of uh, adding it L times, we're adding it once per L. That's what we've gained. In, in using uh, th this buffer. What we've lost is that we are not updating things immediately, but after L steps. So what we have, so in terms of privacy, uh, the point is you, you, because the buffer is private, you can show that when to update still remains private. The fact that I've updated is private. How much to update is private from, because it's Laplacian noise, and of course from the composability of them, we, the fact that we're doing it, we're not losing much. What happened to the accuracy, at least in sparse streams, we have, it's L plus square root of T over L, instead of uh, just square root of T. So, we've, so the optimal choice of L here is uh, fourth root of T. Okay, which I may not know in advance, but I can start uh, doing the usual tricks. So, I'm, uh, so I, I get here error, fourth root of t. So using this sort of cheap trick, I got from square root of t to fourth root of t. You have lower bounds. You probably have better upper bounds. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, you have better upper bounds. I have better upper bounds? Yeah, so Russell, what are the slides? Yeah, <laughs> Russell, what, what? Yeah, I actually removed sort of the talk plan, so I, you, you couldn't have seen. Uh, <laughs> So I have a be better upper bounds, we don't have uh, lower bounds. But that's actually the open question. Like, uh, just, uh, is O of 1, right? That's uh, if, you, if you didn't have to uh, continuously update, right? Uh, uh, order, yeah, order epsilon, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. so the better thing is to do it recursively. We have D levels of cascading uh, buffers. Each level maintains an accumulator counting the real number of ones since the last update a buffer to determine when to flush, and the number of updates uh, since the last flush for, we don't want to have too, too many peri uh, very long periods where nothing uh, happens, so we also keep uh, this. And um, at every step, the accumulator at all levels is simply updated. It, then you, bu buffer is level, uh, a buffer is at level i, a buffer at level i is updated only if the buffer at level i minus one was flushed. And the buffer, bu buffer is flushed if it's overflow or if the number of updates from below the num uh, was, uh, it became too large. And the, the buffer of level d plus one is the output counter. So this is related somewhat to, to your idea, uh, Moses, of this uh, thing. So you also looked at the slides, I guess. So it gives you, yeah, you have various approximations. It gives you log t, well, log to the fourth. So privacy, the output depends on 2D buffer. Each one of them uh, is private, so we get it from approximation. And we have to set now epsilon prime, the actual epsilon that we work in in the, in the Laplacian noise, to be epsilon over log t, because we're going to have something like log t levels. In the accuracy, uh, by setting the parameters right, we get it all, uh, uh, with all but negligible in t probability, the error at every step t is at most um, square root of nt, where this is the actual number of, uh, nt is the actual number of ones, plus uh, something like log, log to the fourth. So this, maybe we didn't quite work as, as much as we could on the error, maybe it could be uh, log cubed, but, uh, but it's going to be some polylog uh, t over uh, epsilon. So what do you mean, nt uh, is the number of ones, up at it's step t, the number, nt is the number of, uh, the, the, uh, nt is the real count. So for the third nt factor, you have a lower bound, right? Yes, yes, yes. This so is, uh, you could only improve this log. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is square root? So this, this comes from the, um, hmm? Hmm? From? Diminution. Yes, 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 yes. You can't. You, you can't have to, <coughs> exactly, you, you cannot have, but this is not so bad, the, the square, this is, this is exactly the type of thing you're saying, uh, this is from sampling or whatever. But th whether this is the best you can do or not, <coughs> it's not clear. 
OK, so we have a counter. And uh, we don't know whether this is the best thing you can do. But now the question is, uh, what do we do with a counter? Um, so let's see. Um, I could probably go on and on and on. Um, let's uh, let me say that in general, there are many algorithms that have a counter somewhere in there. In particular, algorithms somehow uh, aggregate expert advice and count how many times each expert was correct. In using a counter, you can uh, you can approximate. You can sort of do it approximately while keeping what the, uh, what the expert actually said uh, is, is a secret. So, so does a bird like think like that on my name you use? For instance, or so here is an example. One uh, one problem you can solve here is uh, one problem you can do something with is the list update problem. So in the list update problem, you have n elements. You have to put them in, a, in a, some uh, ordered list. It, and then you have a request sequence. A uh, request sequence says, I want this particular element. And you pay the, 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 where it is in the permutation. The cost is how far it is in the current permutation. And for our version, this is not the typical thing, we give rearrangements for free. And we want to, the goal in general is to minimize the total cost for a request sequence. And of course, the request sequence is not known in advance. And our goal is to do this while providing privacy for the request sequence. Okay, so the adversary, where the adversary, the, the adversary sees the list order all the time, sees what you you actually have, and uh, outputs. Uh, and it's still we don't want him to know a particular uh, request in the request sequence. Okay, right. You could, and, and then you could do that sort of as in a generic uh, way. But no, I'm doing it more efficiently. Uh, right. It's, ex it's exactly the slater Tarjan model. No, no, no. The, okay, this is this thing is the the non-standard thing, the rearrangement for free. I need that for the privacy. Yeah. Yeah. When? Uh, yeah. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise Later you would see. This is the, this is the algorithm where the, you pay uh, uh, um, uh, what you do. So, um, so, so this is a very famous problem because it's the first problem which was analyzed in the framework of, of the, co in the competitive framework. And there, if you compare it to the best algorithm that knows the thing in advance, but of course you do have to charge for rearrangement. So, sorry, so the competitive nature doesn't need the, the lower bounds hold even if you have rearrangement for free. But of course, the, for the offline algorithm, you, he has to pay for rearrangement. So otherwise, you can really, you have zero cost. Anyway, so the best you can do there is uh, some fixed, uh, for deterministic, it's some too competitive. And for randomized, it's, it's some, it, there are upper and lower bounds roughly around 1.5. Yeah. Now, here the story you have in mind is different uh, than just sort of like the census story. So here you're thinking more of a shared computer with different users. Exactly. And each user gets to monitor the, the, the what's happening. So think of a cache. So uh, uh, think of the problem of a cache, of a web cache, right? If I, I access uh, some document or some movie and I see that it's very that it comes up very fast. I figure out, oh, Russell must have uh, watched this movie as well. Or the slides. You can. I prefer to have my epsilon small. <laughs> OK. OK, right. So right, it's a good question whether you can view it as bad news or good news. You so. If I can, no I, mean, uh, no, I don't know whether you can do it or not. Uh, so you don't have a matching upper bound. No, I have a better upper bound. I have a one plus little o of one. But with the arrangement for free, right? No, um, uh, uh, the point is, um, I'm going to, 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 to be less ambitious. I'm not going to compete against the best offline one, but against the best offline one that fixes its permutation and never changes its mind. 
the fixed portfolio, exactly. So this is the model that, or well, the, the model is, uh, is old, but for this particular problem, the, uh, Blam, Chawla, and Kalai considered it and showed um, um, that you can be a one plus little of one competitive against the best static algorithm. And, I'm going to, and we're going to, to match their bound. So the point is that their algorithm was really based on the number of times each element has been requested. The algorithm is, starts with the random weights in some range. At any point in time, your weight is your original random weight plus CI, where CI is the number of times this element has been requested. And you have to keep the, the list sorted accordingly. So our algorithm is essentially <laughs> is the same. It, we accept that we run CI using our private counters. So we, have, so we have n counters instead of n factorial, as Russell was suggesting. Um, so we have n counters. It's still a problem, because we have to run n counters. And only one of them is updated each time. So it's really, in terms of, co uh, of work, it's really wasteful. And so we're doing sort of n squared work, or n times t work, instead of uh, sort of order t work. But at the very least, from privacy point of view, it's not a problem because of the privacy of the counter. In accuracy, that you have to go to look into the proof, into their proof, and see that, that it still goes through when you have an approximation here. In terms of efficiency, if you have n counters, don't you need like a noise that is like uh, each one? No, but what each one of them counts uh, th this particular element, a particular element. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. So, uh, so we have so we have a, we we have the problem of running with uh, the multi counter problem. We want to run n counters for t time steps, where at each round only few uh, counters or well one counter is being incremented, and we want to save on work. So. Uh, so there is an issue how to do it, and actually we can, but I'm going to skip that uh, because I want to say just a couple of words on uh, pan privacy. Uh, you don't want the, uh, so the... So in pan privacy, as I said, the, the issue is what happens if the data leaks. And even in sort of a well-intentioned curator of the data, curator is sort of the term uh, for the one who holds the data, is subject to mission creep. As I said, uh, you know, oh, let's use it for something else. You know, let's use the, this data that we've gathered for H1N1 for some other uh, disease or whatever. Then there are subpoenas. And they're always warning, you know, if we, uh, they were required by law, we will release your information. Of course, security breach, the usual stuff. And uh, uh, so our goal is never to store sensitive information. Not to, not to release, but uh, actually never to store this sensitive information as well. And randomized response does that. R the randomized response is the answer to everything. So randomized response never stores the, the, um, the actual information. But the question is, so pan, -priva so pan privacy is algorithms that are private inside and out. And in general, uh, so we have to, as before, we have streams. Yeah. The randomized well, response? The answer to everything. Now, in any reasonable setting, you could just set the noise pretty low, right? And, and then suddenly there's no legal jeopardy, right? Because even if it was only 10% that my uh, thing corrupted, now, you know, legally I'm off, right? If there's like a 10% chance you that do the crime, you're off, right? You want to. Uh, I want to. Well, no, not exactly. If you wish, uh, in, in civil trials, it's not a one. You're, you're, you're thinking of helping the criminals. I'm thinking of helping the, <laughs> the civil uh, litigators. Uh, it, well, it doesn't matter. You said it to something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, nobody will be, there could be a serious jeopardy if you, your, your, your medical data is exposed to a 10% probability. Your premium is going to die. Mm -hmm. Do you think it will? No, I mean, even if it's I'm sure it will, if they can. If it's legal, they will do it. And even if it's not. <laughs> one in, you know, one in thousand people 
have uh, you know some very unfortunate disease. Well, well, that's 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 and, and, and even if it's split ten times, like uh, now it's that's one in hundred people. So you know, uh, as far as the insurance company mm -hmm. is concerned, it's better to let uh, you know um, nine people. I guess he's answering your. So that one yeah. can, uh, you know, uh, That's another point. <sighs> anyway, um, so the goal in PAM privacy is never to, store, to actually store information. And uh, I, in, in, what we want is that, uh, as before, for any two adjacent streams, at any single point in time, the internal state and output are differentially private. So the difference is now that we all also have the adversary sees the internal state. And we can talk about multiple intrusions as, uh, as well, not about a single I intrusion. Single point in time. This, is single, this is a single intrusion. So the basic thing we do is single intrusion. You want maybe a smooth trade-off, but you know, like, like well, any, like maybe. We can achieve a lot with, it, with a single, with a single uh, intrusion. We can achieve a lot. We, which you, you can easily show that you can separate. Not easily, you can show that you can separate. Here the output stream and the internal Okay, so these are two, two independent things, pan privacy and continual output. If we are continual output with intrusion, then it sees the entire output stream and sees one, one uh, place. You can also talk about continual output, continual intrusion. Once you have continual intrusion, you also have continual uh, output. Uh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So randomized that response that is continual intrusion, continual output. That basically defines yeah. randomized response, right? Because uh, no, we actually have an example where you separate to of separating uh, of separating randomized response, uh, separating the sketching model and the uh, streaming model uh, under continual intrusion and continual uh, output. There, there is such such an example. But, uh, but no, you're right, it's tempting to, to think so. It may, it may be the case that it's true for symmetric functions. The example we have is not symmetric. But it may be the case that it's true for symmetric. Um, as, yeah, okay, so as we said about random as response, the question about, so let's see, is the, our counter algorithm, is it uh, pan-private or not? Russell? No. <laughs> it's not. No. Right. Because the internal count accurately reflects what happens since the last flush. And the f when the flush happens is known. So, but it's very easy to make it into a differentially private, into pan private, sorry. You store the, you store, you never store the, the uh, you add, and already hinted in the, the slides, you actually add the noise to begin, you add noise to begin with. So the accumulator is noisy, you start with the noise. So if suddenly it leaks, Nothing happened because it's it's a, a noisy version. So in, so what happens in this case? You're simply adding noise both at the storage and when you add it. So you have only doubled the amount of noise. So it's not so bad. So it's very easy to correct the algorithm and get um, and get. Uh, so we have so we have a counter which is continually observable, and it's uh, resilient to a single uh, intrusion. But not to two. Like yeah. Exactly. And in fact, uh, we, of course, the most desirable is continual intrusion. And here we can show that the, re the reason, really, uh, the reason t that uh, if you have continual intrusion, the best you can do is uh, random as response. You can get error of the, the fact that you have a state does not help you. Yeah, a random is response. response. No, no, no. That, uh, that's for any infinite number of intrusions. I mean, can you can choose? Can you choose n? Like, if you want hundred intrusions or whatever. Oh, oh, the number of intrusions. Yes. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Um, uh, because here uh, the number of intrusions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do because you you, you can get, uh, but it will become worse and worse. Yeah, we do. Have, you can do something. You can simply once. Okay, now we're we're getting into the finer details. Are we talking about announced intrusions or not? If it's a subpoena, then it's announced. Mm -hmm. If it's a, uh, if you're listening in, then it's not announced. Then 
then it's very hard. Then essentially you can think of two intrusions, two unannounced intrusions as almost as powerful as a uh, as, uh, continual one. Two unannounced one is almost as powerful as a continual one. If they're announced, then you can simply restart and it's not so bad. And then, it, then, it, then the, the degradation is graceful. <sighs> okay. Um, so my last point, I want to make just the fact uh, that, uh, with, uh, that a lot of the work, a lot of the issues in pan privacy have to, to, to do with the issue of protecting things at the user level. So as I said here, I'm trying to protect all so user, I want to protect the, uh, the blue ones, I want to protect the white ones, and I want to protect the yellow ones. So not just a single occurrence of them, but all of them. So you, you wouldn't be able to tell whether the blue stuff appears in the stream or not. So uh, the example, think of the, um, so think of the example of the data stream is sort of user and query, which is definitely a realistic one. You have a user or IP address and a query. And you want to protect all the queries of a particular user, not just the particular pair user query, but you want to, not the particular item user query, but you want to protect all, everything about that particular user. That's why we call it uh, user level. So now the question is, can you do anything uh, interesting? So this simply changes the notion of adjacency. Right? Adjacency now is uh, two streams whether they're the same if some user is dropped from the stream. So this, the definitions remain the same, it's just the notion of adjacency changes. Um, ah. and, and everything we've seen so far is event level. Not, uh, anyway, um, so the, the one thing we can do is, uh, this is the, I think the last thing I want to show you, uh, is um, for instance stream, you want the density, the number of distinct elements, the number of users that appeared. So user will appear many times on the stream, and we want to get and we want to get um, an approximation of the, the the ratio, or either an additive or a multiplicative approximation of the density of the number of distinct users that appeared. So remember, the point is that we shouldn't be able to tell whether a, a, a particular user appears many times in the stream, and nothing in our storage should reveal whether this particular user appeared or not. So of course, sampling doesn't work. Uh, or typical things like sampling don't work. So what we'll do is uh, just uh, think of it when you come to an elevator and you, an elevator may come, if you don't press the button, an elevator comes after a certain amount of time by naturally for some reason. If you press the uh, elevator, then it will co come a bit quicker. But if you press it twice, it will, it will have it will have no effect. At least that's what I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> People still press the elevator when they arrive. <laughs> Disagree. <laughs> yeah, but the point is that it doesn't matter how many times we've pressed. Uh, it doesn't matter how many times the button has been pressed. It's the same distribution. <laughs> yeah. So here is so what we have is for each user. Of course, then we do sampling. But let's think of it as uh, for each user. We store a single bit, bx, which is drawn either according to d0 or d1. So initially, all the bx's are drawn according to d0. And when we encounter a user x in the stream, we resample its bit under d1. We don't care what it was before. We're resampling it using d1. So what happens is that if it appeared at least once, it's going to be drawn according to d0. So if it had never appeared in the stream, it's going to be drawn according to d0. If it appeared in the stream, we want it to be drawn according to D1. It will be drawn according to D1. So now, if the D0 and D1 are, cl are, are, are close enough so as not to reveal, it, so it will be hard given a single sample to decide whether it was drawn from D0 or D1. Oh, but if we have a whole aggregate of them, we can tell how many were drawn to D from D0 and how many were drawn from D1. Then we have an approximation for the number of elements, uh, for the number of elements in the stream. This would give us additive, and then we can work and get a multiplicative one. Um, okay, then uh, we can make this algorithm actually also continue. This in itself is not continually output, but we can make the algorithm continually output 
but we lose in accuracy. And one question is how to do that. We min count, so yeah. yeah, yes, you can do. You could min. So this is a useful thing, but min count, but not necessarily for density. Oh, for density estimating to get it into the multiplicative error, you you use something like that. But we use min count for various other uh, problems. So. Uh, This is in itself is not differentially private, but so we use it exactly here. Uh, so some other problems we know how to do is the p cropped min, sort of min over the the number of appearances. When you when you chop, you d if someone appears too many times, I, I consider it just max. Incident counter the fraction of items that appear exactly k times. This is uh, technically probably the, the most involved one, the fraction of heavy hitters, how many items appear at least k times. So all of them have, all, so the, we, they have pan-private uh, algorithms, and we can make them into uh, uh, also continually output uh, versions, except one. So there is an example of something that can be done pan-privately, but cannot be done, uh, but cannot be done uh, with continual output. That's modular incident counter. The fraction of output uh, of items appearing exactly k times mod p. So this you cannot do. And this is actually here we use this uh, like the min count. We use this here to get um, the incident counter. Um, and because it's internal, we don't care about. Uh, it, it's not part of the output. It, it's sort of in, an in inside routine here, and it's used a little like like the, the min count. And, the, the, and the, we turn this into a hash function, the mod p. <sighs> anyway, so let me finish uh, here saying that, so we have these three type of things. We have a, a continual output versus a not continual output. So everything, we're talking about stuff that can be done with differential privacy. We, we, you can talk, and all, all the things that we've introduced today, the, the continual output, the uh, pan privacy, and the user versus event level, all of them are independent of each other. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not quite saying that we have really shown that they're independent, but they seem independent. So for many of, many of these uh, uh, areas in the diagram, we actually sh can show that they are separate from others, but I, I, but, but I'm not claiming right now that we can really show that everything here is uh, separate. The point is that so all these thi all these are separate issues, but of course they're related. Uh, the one place you can see that they're related is if you have continual uh, pan privacy. If you have continual intrusion pan privacy, then you have um, uh, then you also have continual uh, output. But other than that, uh, for e r roughly speaking, for each one of the, these problems, you can show something that is in one, it satisfies one of the properties, but does not, cannot be satisfy uh, the other property. Okay, let me stop here. Nobody asked Guy any questions. Uh, this was only hard yeah. questions. Yeah. Any easy questions? Or hard ones for Guy. <laughs> מספר ריקווסט. כן, מספר ריקווסט. כן, מספר ריקווסט זה בסדר. לא, ובו 
אה, שיוזר לבל, לא, יוזר לבל, זהו, אז... אני לא, לא, אני לא מבין עד הסוף, יכול להיות ש... יש משהו שאתה לא יכול... אה, יש משהו שאי אפשר לעשות. נגיד שיש לך מומחים, אתה מתייעץ עם מומחים. אז מה ש... עם הקאונטר אתה יכול... אתה רוצה, אתה לא רוצה בכלל לדעת אם התייעצתי עם המומחה הזה. בדיוק, ואתה רוצה לדעת כמה בקשות היו טוטל למומחים. לא, אני רוצה להתייעץ עם מומחים, אני רוצה להיות טוב כמו איזשהו קריטריון של המומחים. אבל אני לא רוצה שאני אדע אם אני התייעצתי בכלל עם המומחה הזה. נכון, וחוץ מזה אתה רוצה לספור כמה בקשות. עזוב, רק החלק ה... אפילו החלק, אי אפשר לעשות את זה. אי אפשר לעשות, לא רק זה, לא שאתה לא יכול להיות טוב כמו המומחה הטוב ביותר פלוס זה, אתה לא יכול להיות טוב כמו המומחה הרע ביותר. אתה לא יכול להיות טוב כמו המומחה הרע ביותר. כלומר, זה... אני לא השארתי כאן שום חלק. אתה, כן, זהו, האמת היא שזה בעיה שממש לא ידענו מה הכיוון שלה. לא ידענו מה, מה, אה, כמעט לקחתי את ה... מה? זכיתי ב...